aggressive, brutal, and purely enjoyable horror debuts since the Evil Dead. Genuinely frightening. Jaws, Aliens, and Predator with a werewolf twist. Spoon, I don't think it's very smart to be taunting the thing that's trying to kill you. Hey everyone, Brandon here, and today, I'm going to start off my October movie reviews with what else? A horror movie, but not just any horror movie, the very first werewolf movie I ever reviewed. This is my review on Dog Soldiers. Now, Dog Soldiers was a direct-to-DVD movie released back in 2002 and directed by Neil Marshall. It would go on to direct probably one of the scariest movies I ever saw in my life, The Scent, by an even stranger film, Doomsday. The story starts off when a group of soldiers go on a simple, routine military exercise in the middle of the woods. Unfortunately, when they stumble upon the enemy team, they find out that most of them are dead, except for one survivor who claims that something had attacked them, and that something is werewolves. So now the group of soldiers are held up in a small house with a zoologist named Megan, and it's a full moon tonight, so the soldiers must make their last stand against these monsters or be killed. So will they survive, or become dinner to these savage creatures? Now, I gotta say, I'm not a big fan of werewolf movies, but I love dog soldiers. I mean, to start off, the acting was great. I mean, Kevin McKidd playing Private Cooper, he's a great protagonist, a great leader, someone who tries to keep his team together even though they're being attacked by, well, werewolves. Then there's Megan, who's supposed to be, I guess, the love interest for Cooper, but at least it's not, like, shoved in your face, so that's a good thing. And then, of course, there's Captain Ryan, played by Leon Cunningham, and he's basically the arrogant jerk in every horror movie who knows exactly what's going on but doesn't bother to say anything. And then, of course, there's Spoon. Spoon it just doesn't seem to be afraid of the werewolves. Hell, he was the guy who went off taunting them a few moments ago. And there are other soldiers as well, and they all did great. Now that we looked at the soldiers, it's time to look at the antagonists of the film, which are the werewolves. Now, to start off, I'd just like to say that, um, in today's standard, mostly a lot of things in movies are done with CGI, including monsters and horror movies. But that's not the case with dog soldiers. They actually have people in costumes and use mechanical engineering for the masks that the actors wear to give the werewolves facial expressions. And I gotta say, that's a lot better. That's great, because it's scarier. And scarier because they make it they make them look more realistic. Than like something you would see in real life. Unlike with today's thing where you see a werewolf done completely in CGI. And this film uses classic techniques that movies like American Werewolf in London and The Howling use. They're horror classics, and that's what this movie was trying to achieve, to make them look realistic. Speaking of special effects, they look pretty good in this independent film. I mean, the guns work fine, the set is great, the blood... Oh man, the blood. Um, just to warn people out there, this film can get pretty gory at times. Now, I'm not talking about this film's full-on blood and gore, but when the certain scenes come up which show it, it's pretty graphic. So, people with weak stomachs out there might want to give this a pass, but if you still want to check it out, you've been warned. There are only two problems I have with this film, and the first problem is not really much of a problem, but more like a concern. Is that, well, Neil Marshall has the tendency to use all British actors in the movies he's made, um, people with British accents, and there's nothing wrong with that. They all do a great job. But the thing is, though, is that at times, I found it um, hard to understand what exactly they were saying in the movie. I would have to rewind the film and hear what they had to say again just to understand what they were saying. So I feel that American audiences who have not gotten used to or even or used to hearing British accents might have a hard time understanding exactly what the characters are saying in the movie. The only other problem I have with this movie is, well, is a certain part that happens. Now, I don't want to spoil anything, but I will say this. One of the characters um, in the film gets hurt severely. I mean, really, really bad. It's a type of injury where you don't expect a lot of people to, to um, survive from. But yet, they're able to keep him alive long enough and fix him up and get him back on his feet. And I found that kind of ridiculous. But then again, I don't want to get too much into it because I guess that you can call this nitpicking. And also the fact that I have a problem with this guy being able to live through this type of injury, but I absolutely have no problem with believing that they're being attacked by werewolves. Besides that, Dog Soldiers is still a great movie. I mean, it's also very scary too. I mean, there's some scenes in the movie that made me jump. It's not just a scary movie, it's also very funny. I mean, what the characters do, what they say, it's hilarious. So, I wouldn't exactly call this Jaws, Alien, and Predator rolling the one. 
but I will say that this is a pretty damn good werewolf movie. So in the end, if you're a big fan of these types of movies, then definitely check out this film. You won't be disappointed. And if you just want to watch a great horror film, then please check this out as well. So with that, I'd like to thank you all for watching this review. I would like to thank my good friend Bloodfang Wolf 23 or Anna for the request. And with that, I'll see you all next time.